the unique properties of this network have enabled therapeutic treatments for many diseases, particularly cancers and autoimmune diseases. So the ASI therapy, the main advantage of ASI is its ability to specifically target complementary autoantibodies, thereby effectively suppressing the specific immune response. Furthermore, unlike non-specific active immunotherapy, autologous active specific immunotherapy, ASI, specifically targets the problematic tissue while preserving the surrounding normal tissue from non-specific toxicities. The unique properties of this network have enabled therapeutic treatments for many diseases, particularly cancers and autoimmune diseases. It is most effective in treating conditions related to immunity imbalance, such as allergic disorders, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, psoriasis, systemic lupus, erythematosis, and type 1 diabetes even. In addition, ASI can also be used to treat cancer of the liver, stomach, pancreas, breast, prostate, gastrointestinal tract, lymphatic system, and even melanoblastomas. The application of ASI in treatment and management of cancers has been well documented, including malignancies such as of colon cancer, melanoma, and renal cell carcinomas. A comprehensive review of the recent achievements of using anti-ideotypic antibodies as cancer vaccines to induce humoral and or cellular immune responses have been documented by a number of researchers, scientists, and clinicians in the past decades and years. Due to the nature of the anti-idiotypic antibodies, which selectively suppress only the specific autoantibodies, which they are complementary to, the use of the anti-idiotypic antibody has proven to be an attractive alternative form of immunotherapy capable of modulating the immune system without side effects of non-specific immunosuppression that is often been associated with conventional immunosuppressive drugs. Active specific immunotherapy, as I mentioned before, was pioneered by late Dr. Rudolf Pecker. Subsequently, SI based on the concept of the anti-idiotypic antibodies to be used as regulatory antigens was further researched by Niels Jern in 1970s and based on the ideotypic network theory, Jern postulated that antigenic stimulation leads to production of ideotypes and anti-ideotypes as a network of interacting antibodies and the immune response is regulated by the responses to the ideotypes. Ideotypes are unique determinants of immunoglobulin or T-cell receptor based upon their antigen binding specificity. The ideotypic network is crucial in maintaining the homeostasis of the immune system. The ideotypic network theory. The presence of epitope of or antigenic determinants stimulates the production of antigen-specific antibodies, let's call them AB1, which induce the production of anti-ideotypic antibodies, let's call them AB2. And they're classified into AB2 alpha, AB2 beta, LB2 gamma to maintain equilibrium. Recently, two categories of AB2 known as the other two uh, uh, AB2 categories have been identified, although there is limited literature uh, present uh, to the date. 
AB2 can stimulate the production of anti-anti idiotypic antibodies, also known as, as AB3, which possess similar binding capacity as AB1. Therefore, the balance of the network equilibrium is essential to ensure that the immune system can effectively fight against exogenous antigens. Let's talk about anti-idiotypic antibodies in autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases usually require lifelong treatment because current drugs do not restore the immune tolerance of autoantigens. The ideal treatment targets disease-related antigens rather than acting as a global immunosuppressant, thus limiting side effects and focusing on the underlying cause of the disease. Active specific immunotherapy has been reported for the treatment of several types of autoimmune diseases. Typically, immune diseases are characterized by the uncontrolled production of autoantibodies, often when patients are asymptomatic and before clinical onset. For example, anti-DNA antibody considered as a hallmark of the uh, SLE has been reported to be detected as early as two years prior to the diagnosis made, while anti-P, anti-SLE antibody, was detected more than a year prior to the preclinical diagnosis and shows elevation during active disease episodes or the flare-up of the disease and normalizing during periods of remission. The use of anti-idiotypic antibody as an SLE vaccine was demonstrated in a small clinical trial in which five out of nine patients administered with a mouse anti-DSDNA monoclonal antibody developed anti-idiotypic antibodies within the first three months, and they happened without any adverse side effects and remained disease-free during the two-year follow-up period. Similarly, active specific immunotherapy can modulate the immune system by inducing the production of anti-idiotypic antibodies, which will bind to the autoantibodies instead of attacking the patient's own cells, thereby restoring balance to the idiotypic network. Factors in the development of the autoimmunity. Well, there's few of them. There are genetic factors. It's the inheritance of susceptibility genes. There are environmental factors or the environmental triggers. And there are infections and inflammatory stimuli. So we can see that, for instance, genetic susceptibility. And, and all these things, they can also uh, in, coexist in the same time. There can be the presence of the genetic factors uh, which are further triggered by the environmental triggers in presence of uh, infections or the inflammatory stimuli, or not even necessary, the infection can be just in the presence of the low-grade systemic inflammation that is uh, uh, almost often present in uh, the Asian individuals and in cases of development of the chronic age-related disorders.